Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over some conceptual distinctions. Uh, it's basically uh, what's on page 200, uh, these three circles. So I think the material on that part of the book is good, so uh, I, I urge you to check it out. So there's your uh, rationally persuasive arguments. There is your sound arguments. And then there's your arguments that people are actually persuaded by. Arguments people are persuaded by. Okay, so there are these three circles. And the point the book is making is that these three come apart. So there's parts here, parts here, parts here, where they don't overlap. And so what I want to teach in this video is to explain like why they come apart or how they could come apart. So what's a rationally persuasive argument that how might that be different from arguments that people are actually persuaded by? Well, sometimes um, you might have had this happen where you give someone a completely reasonable argument and the other person isn't persuaded by it. That would be a rationally persuaded, persuasive argument that is not an argument people are persuaded by. And the reason might be um, because, I don't know, they just might be stubborn or prejudiced or they might just they might just not like your conclusion. Okay, But anyway, that would be a rationally persuasive argument that other people aren't persuaded by. Um, okay, now here is the flip side. There might be arguments people are persuaded by, but that are not rationally persuasive. Now, how might that be the case? Well, um, sometimes uh, people are moved by rhetoric, as we've talked about before. Uh, so someone might speak with a lot of confidence and with a cadence, and they might use fancy words. Okay, these are all rhetorical devices we've learned. Okay, so they might use rhetoric. Uh, or they just, this is like flip of what I said before, they might want to believe the conclusion. Okay, so, but the argument might, might not actually be a reasonable one or a rationally persuasive one. Okay, so that would be an argument that people are persuaded by, but it's not rationally persuasive. Okay, it's not actually reasonable for them to believe. They're just being moved by the rhetoric. Um, Okay, now let's think about sound arguments. How do sound arguments relate? And notice uh, we're, sound arguments now means both inductive and deductive, okay, in, in this context. Now, could there be a sound argument that people are not persuaded by? Well, for sure, <laughs> right? I mean, um, uh, and that might be for the reasons already given, uh, bias or um, stubbornness or you know, prejudice, okay? Um, there can also be sound arguments that people aren't rationally persuaded by either. Okay, and to think of that, think of the example I gave uh, in the beginning of this set of videos, where the person flips a coin and it lands in a cup, and it lands heads up. Okay, it lands heads. Um, now this argument would be a sound argument. The coin landed heads. Premise one. Premise two. If the coin landed landed heads, it didn't land tails. Therefore, it didn't land tails. Okay. That would be a sound argument, um, but it wouldn't be a rationally persuasive one for the person who has not let Yuck look into the cup. Okay, so that would be a sound argument that's not rationally persuasive, and it also wouldn't be persuasive too. That's the point I made in the earlier video. Now we're kind of fleshing that out. Okay, now could there be a rationally persuasive argument that's not a sound argument? Um, that, this one's the hardest to think up of, but fortunately, it's actually what we just covered in the previous video, right? Uh, this argument would be rationally persuasive for someone who lived thousands of years ago. It would be reasonable for them to believe these premises, okay? But uh, the problem is that premise one is false, okay? So 
Uh, it's, it would be reasonable for them to believe it and rationally persuasive, but um, it just it's still that doesn't make it sound. Okay, so we've seen how all three of these um, the categories actually come apart, and this is useful for our own thinking um, and our own even dealing with other people. Like sometimes you might give a rationally persuasive argument that people aren't convinced by. And you shouldn't necessarily feel bad about that. I mean, it might not be you. It might be them. <laughs> um, I mean, it might be that you're being entirely rational and they're actually being the irrational ones. And But that's a reminder for us, too. I mean, we want to make sure that we're not just in this category where we're just believing stuff because of rhetoric or because we're manipulated or because we just want to believe uh, the conclusion. So this will help us think, okay, I don't want to be that person that is in this category. I want to be more in this category. Okay. The distinction between these sorts of arguments and soundness, okay, uh, is useful because uh, I mean it just helps us realize that we're fallible. That we might have rationally persuasive arguments where, given our time and um, the state of our evidence, uh, it's possible for us to be rationally persuaded by an argument, even if the argument's not sound. So. Um, sometimes we might reasonably believe the premises, but we're still wrong. And that's just reminding us that we're fallible human beings, even if we're being rational. Okay, so these are like real life ways that these distinctions matter. Um, and so, yeah. All right, so we'll dig into that more and uh, in all of this stuff in the Zoom session. So uh, see you guys there.